so having these ideas and attaching them to where I think the world is going and looking for the waves that are coming, I think is very important as you're trying to conceive of how do you take AI and move it into the, into the world at the right time. So that's a little bit about trends. Where's the world going? Um, there are also triggers. So take Siri as, uh, as a concept. My first prototype of Siri I had in 1993, you can see the little device all the way to the left. I had a mobile tablet, looked a little like an iPad. You could talk to it. You, you didn't have the touch gesture, but you had handwriting recognition. And you could pretty much do everything that came out on Siri some decades later uh, in Apple. So you had calendars and email and maps, and you could talk and interact with it in a natural way. But my claim is if I had tried to start Siri as a company any time earlier than what we did, we would have failed. It would have been too early. So you need to not only be working on trends and catching the waves, you have to time it right. If we were five years later, we would have been too late, likely. And so you need to look for in, in, in business what I call triggers. So for us, the trigger was the introduction of the iPhone. The iPhone, um, you had a concrete knowledge of what's to come two years later. So many people said, only, you know, Apple can't build a phone. Only phone companies can build phones. We looked at it and said, they have just flipped the game. And two years from now, every handset manufacturer, uh, telco, et cetera, will be scrambling to try to one-up Apple and the iPhone. And the screen is small. It's still hard to type. The bandwidth is slow. Every click takes a long time. That Siri idea I've been working on for a while might be just the thing. So look for tr trends, be tracking trends, and looking for the triggers to know when is the time to introduce your AI technology. Uh, a second thing I think is really important with uh, AI applications is what's the right environment to work on them? So sh is it a research lab? Should I go to a big company? Should I do a startup? Um, and I think each of these have different uh, benefits. So within um, Siri, I worked at SRI for a number of years before that, incubating the ideas, trying and exploring things, but it was never able to get to kind of production quality. Uh, at a big company, there are research labs, so you can work in a research lab of a, of a very profitable company who will let you do things for a while. Um, but on the main product path, their deployment aspects, it's very hard to kind of shift and try something novel uh, at scale. But it's very good at getting out to many users. And so I just want to highlight the startup as, for me, the key engine of creation. Um, a startup is special because you have to be ambitious. You cannot do something just slightly better because the big companies have more customers, more PhDs, more everything. You have to take a long bet and go after it. Um, and, and, and research labs do that. But a startup, you raise some money and you can count the number of days until you die. And that, you know, it's literally translate the dollars into runway. And if you do not produce value along your ambitious goal, you, you, you lose. 